yeah, I bumped into this thing regarding the apostasy laws and um, it's just kind of threw me off a little bit. <laughs> in essence, the only way that capital punishment is applied in you in Islam is if you don't have a Muslim family? No, my parents are Hindu. Ah, your parents are Hindu. Okay, mm. so how are you? You good? I'm, I'm a bit nervous, so I'm not going to lie, but um, okay. I'm, I'm no, good. No need to be nervous. Okay, um, so what is your um, question? Um, I only have one question so far and it's just regarding the, um, the apostasy laws that are in Islam. I think, because um, basically... I've been looking into Islam. I'd say right now I'm an agnostic, but I've looked into Christianity, Hinduism. But in my personal opinion, I really feel like I'm leaning towards Islam right now. I believe that out of all, re all the religions out there, this has to be the true one, right? I've been reading the Quran, finished the eighth chapter yesterday. Hopefully I can start the ninth one tonight. Um, I've started reading the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I've got the seal nectar on me. Um, <laughs> Okay. Uh, right here so i've been trying to get into it but um yeah i bumped into this thing regarding the apostasy laws and um it's just kind of threw me off a little bit because in um one of the hadiths um i think it was uh he al bukhari 6922 um whoever changed his islamic religion then kill him it was stated that that's what the um prophet muhammad peace be upon him said but then i read the quran because i've read um, Surah Al-Baqarah already The second chapter And it says now, Before you go on And you yeah. interpret the Quran Using chapter 2 verse 256 It's uh, no compulsion in religion Because I yeah. know where you're going Exactly yeah, yeah. Before you yeah. interpret Quran On our behalf You can ask a question You know Because if you're uh, not a Muslim Then you don't understand yeah. The Islamic text Right Yeah So when the Quran says There's no compulsion in religion mm -hmm. This is prior to accepting the message Alright So I cannot compel you To accept Islam mm -hmm. So I cannot compel Someone to accept Islam And the reason of a relation Of this verse Is that there is a man Who came to the Prophet Sallallahu He accepted yeah. Islam And his two children yeah. Were Christian Then he came mm -hmm. to the Prophet Sallallahu And he said They're refusing Islam Should I force them To accept Islam mm -hmm. And the Prophet said to him No So you cannot force Someone who is a non-Muslim To enter into Islam But once mm -hmm. someone Enters into Islam There's obligations mm -hmm. And responsibilities mm -hmm. After making that choice So the hadith you're referring to Is someone He chose to accept Islam Willingly mm -hmm. Then that choice That he made Has obligations and rulings mm -hmm. So we don't understand There's no compulsion religion, Meaning you cannot compel Anything on anyone at all That's not the case in Islam Because mm -hmm. I can compel you to punish you if you steal in Islam. I can punish you if you commit certain sins in Islam and in Islamic mm -hmm. law. I can compel you, force you to do certain things by law under Islamic state. So that's not mm -hmm. under a correct understanding of the verse. Mm -hmm. Now, regarding that ruling, let me just clarify and explain this issue because I don't believe I explained this issue before on my channel. So let me go in depth into explaining this issue, the idea of apostasy. Now, first, I want to ask you this thing. Do you believe in democracy? Yeah, I'd say so. So you think democracy is a good thing? It's not something I've thought about a lot. It's not a test. I'm not testing you. But generally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, you, do people view, non-Muslims, they generally view democracy as a good thing, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what is democracy? Democracy is that the people, the majority choose the ruler and the rules are applied in the country based on what the majority chose, mm -hmm. right? So if the majority of the Muslims choose a law in their land, if you leave Islam in our country, you will be punished. You will have a capital punishment. Why is that a problem if you believe in democracy? Mm, Since the majority point. chose that. That is a good point, yeah. Yeah, so if you're a person who believes in democracy, the last mm -hmm. thing I want to hear from the liberals who believe in democracy, mm -hmm. I'm not saying you, I'm saying generally liberals, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Last yeah, thing yeah, I yeah. want to hear from the liberals who believe in democracy, democracy is to come and complain about a law that can only be applied in Islamic state mm -hmm. because the law of someone leaving his religion being punished can only be applied in a Sharia state mm -hmm. and within a Sharia state the leader becomes the leader after the group of people called Ahlul Hillu Al Aqd there is a, mm -hmm. a system that happens and they choose the leader so if the majority agree with the leader agree with the law then if you are someone who believe in democracy you shouldn't have any issues yeah. with the law of apostasy that's the first thing I'm going to say yeah. this is just a response from a secular point of view right mm -hmm. from an Islamic yeah. point of view as I said this can only be applied by the leader now the second thing is this how can I know that someone left his religion? Well, I'm going to assume if he was being voc uh, vocal about it. Like if he were not... If he's not, system. can I know? No, if he's doing it behind closed doors, not really. No one can know. So the only no. way I can know you left Islam is that you come and you tell me you left Islam. Mm -hmm, yeah. The only way a, a Muslim or a state can establish that an individual has left the fold of Islam is for that individual to come himself and state, declare clearly in the public that he left the religion of Islam. Mm -hmm. So now he's not just leaving Islam. Now he is inciting other people to leave Islam as well. Because when he declares something out loud to other individuals then that thing can become a habit for other people or an easy thing for other people to also do because he did that I can do it too and then mm -hmm. when you have multiple individuals rioting and joining each other leaving Islam okay we're not going to follow Islamic Sharia now because we left Islam you don't tell me not to drink you don't tell me not to steal and you are under a Sharia state and you will have a group of people who will cause revolution, corruption and killing and stealing and murdering when they do that. So I cannot know that someone left Islam except if he declares he, he left Islam. The second thing is in Islam, if a person declares that he left Islam, there is a period of repentance. 
So he, people, uh, the, the state brings him and say to him, repent or you will be punished. Mm -hmm. And that period can go up to 20 days or can be just three days, but not less than three days. They will say to him, repent or you will be punished. So now he has a choice to lie and say, oh yeah, I came back to Islam. Mm -hmm. In essence, the only way your that capital punishment is applied in you in Islam is if you choose to be killed. That's the yeah. only way you can be punished Islamically with that punishment of apostasy. If you choose to be killed. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you can lie and say, I became a Muslim and then you will become what we call a munafiq. A munafiq is a hypocrite. Someone yeah. who shows belief and hides disbelief. And then these people existed at the time of the Prophet Muhammad that they were not punished. Even though mm -hmm. the Prophet had a list of all of the hypocrites at his time. He did not punish them because they showed outwardly that they were believers. So in the community, do you, do you show that we are believers? We believe in Allah. We're Muslims. Whatever they hide and they conceal in their heart is a punishment for them in the afterlife and the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. But if someone were to come out loud publicly and declare that he left Islam, then we have this process that he was asked to repent. If he doesn't repent, then he's punished. Capital punishment. And in reality, that would only happen if he choose to die. It's yeah. a very simple thing. You know, yeah. uh, and there is a narration of uh, two of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, Mu'ad and Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. Mu'ad came to Abu Musa al -Ash and he saw him with a Jewish person. He said, who is this? He says, a Jew who, he, who accepted Islam and left Islam. Mm -hmm. And Abu Musa al-Ash'ari was over 20 days he'd been trying to bring him back to Islam. So he didn't chop his head off. <laughs> he was <laughs> trying to bring him to Islam, right? Mm -hmm. He was trying to talk to him, bring him back to Islam. And then Mu'ad ibn Jabal said that he had enough now. I'm not going to get off my camel unless that person is punished. Why? Because he's ha had over 20 days of him being warned and been trying to bring him to Islam and clearing any of his doubts. Maybe it's because of ignorance he left Islam or something like this, right? Mm -hmm. So Islamically, I, there is nothing more just than Islam. And mm -hmm. as I said, you cannot be punished by the law of apostasy unless you choose yourself to be killed. Mm -hmm. Because you have to ignore claiming that, okay, I came back to Islam. Yeah. Is that clear now? Yeah, yeah. That clears up a lot. Thank you. Okay, no problem. That's the only question you have? Yeah, that was the only question I had really and truly. No problem. I appreciate it because no. I was bugging no. me for a while. And I'm, no, thank keep you. reading and researching. And if you've got any questions, you're welcome to come back. Anytime. And I also, before I hop off, I just wanted to say thank you a lot for your content because... um. Islam has helped me out a lot in terms of, I'm not, I'm not a Muslim yet, but I found a lot of peace in it. I've noticed I'm becoming a better person. I've started respecting my parents more. I've stopped drinking. I know I'm not a Muslim yet, but I've already felt... So why, why don't take the step and accept Islam then? Because, <laughs> um, I mean, it's only been like three months since I started looking into it. And um, I just don't know. I don't want it to be a thing of where, you know, I take my Shahada and then... Another problem crops up tomorrow. Something else that I doubt about Islam, but then no. But this is not a healthy mm -hmm. mentality to have, I would say, because uh, to think maybe something will come. This is just following conjecture. You know, Allah in the Quran clearly says that about the disbelievers, they only follow conjecture. So it's not a good thing to just follow conjecture, right? Mm -hmm. If I have complete evidence that something makes sense in this point of time, I should follow it. Unless I come across something, then I start asking questions. But generally, mm -hmm. if everything makes sense to me, then I should stick to that thing that makes sense to me. I'm not going to push you to do it, but I think you're there. Mm -hmm. If it makes sense to you, then you should you should do it. Like Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. And it's helped me out a lot, as I said, as a person. But um, yeah, thank you, because your content no that you post has really kind of answered a lot of questions. I saw you do the emotional shahada with that person and I, I resonated with that video a lot. There are certain questions I had. Will I be forgiven? I make sins. I still make mistakes. And so many things that you're not just you, but other Dawah YouTubers have said. It's helped me out a lot. And I really Alhamdulillah. Want to Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, I can see you're there, you know. And no, if you ever I'm want honest. to come back and take your shahada, I'm, I'm happy to. No, but uh, honestly, man, okay. like, I can't stress it enough. Thank you so much. No problem. We, My pleasure, you have brother. helped me out so much. Before Islam. My I was so lost, brother. I was depressed. I was in a bad place. And now I'm going to like accept. May I like accept from me? I think Allah. obviously it all goes to Allah. He guides who he wills, but you guys are helping push that out. And I appreciate that so much, man. Honestly. No problem. No so, problem. Um, okay, I'll let you go. Joshua. Yeah, thank you, man.